for your infantry, cover can often mean the difference between victory or death. Almost every object you encounter on the battlefield will provide some level of protection for your troops. There are many types of cover on the battlefield. Most cover your infantry will encounter early in the game is directional cover. You must keep cover between yourself and your enemy. Craters, on the other hand, protect your troops from any direction. Secondly, Different cover types have different levels of durability and protection. A stone wall offers better protection than a wooden fence. When you have a squad selected, the mouse cursor will indicate the quality and distribution of cover on the battlefield. Light cover is represented by a yellow shield. Heavy cover is represented by a green shield. When you find your enemies in cover, you should fall back on simple military training. Use weapons like grenades or other explosives to dislodge your opponent or flank them. Units in cover have defensive bonuses and are difficult to attack from the front. Flanking the position and getting into close range will negate the cover bonus and even the odds. Use your infantry's ability to vault to find new flanking routes or take shortcuts for faster flanking attacks. Flanking is also a great tactic to use against enemy armor, where you can get shots on the lighter side and rear armor. Always look for opportunities to flank the enemy and always try to protect your flanks. You will undoubtedly hear a lot of F words on the battlefield, but the most important one is flank. Our soldiers faced temperatures below minus 40 on their drive to Moscow, and few human beings can operate effectively in those temperatures. Unless you prepare for the arrival of General Winter, your soldiers will suffer for your failures and die of exposure. In the open, your troops will suffer from the effects of cold. They will slow down and eventually die. Watch your troops for their current state. A blue thermometer indicates freezing. A red indicates warming. You can protect your troops more fully by garrisoning buildings, moving your troops in half-track personnel carriers, or by building fires with your pioneers. The Soviets will likely attempt the same. Even the Russians don't enjoy minus 40, regardless of what they say. But it gets better, or worse, perhaps. Lizards and strong winds can increase your exposure, causing your troops to freeze faster. Certain abilities like airstrikes will be unavailable in blizzards, so you might take advantage of the bad weather to seize ground. Just be sure when you are attacking that you pay attention to ice you encounter. Ice can be damaged by the passage of your tanks and vehicles and destroyed by heavy weapons such as mortars, anti-tank guns and artillery, sending unlucky units to a hypothermic death. Watch for deep snow around the battlefield. Cross it if you must, but be aware that it will slow your troops. Even vehicles will find their movements somewhat slowed by deep snow, although not to the extent of infantry. Finally, both infantry and vehicles will leave tracks in deep snow that will be visible to other combatants. Your pioneers are experts at building structures and defenses. Soviet forces are supported by their combat engineers. In addition, some infantry squads can also build defenses and other structures.
pioneers and combat engineers can repair buildings, vehicles and bridges. Build menus can be found on the command panel of the unit. There are two types, production buildings and field defenses. Production buildings will be able to order in the soldiers and vehicles that comprise your army. Field defenses prevent the enemy from moving freely around the battlefield. Order your pioneers to build a structure from the list. Not all areas of the map will support the construction of a building. While the building is selected, if you want to cancel the order, simply right-click anywhere and it will cancel the selection. To confirm the order, simply left-click on a valid territory and the squad will move to begin construction. Certain structures, like bunkers, must be faced to cover key objectives. These buildings will show you their direction of facing. Face it in the direction you want with a mouse and left-click again to confirm. You can cancel a structure under construction at any time by selecting the Cancel Construction button in the command panel. When a building is completed, it will also activate a selection tab above the command card. You can select buildings from this location from anywhere and order units, set rally points or see what is currently in the queue waiting to be deployed. Battlefield knowledge is vital to tactical success. But no commander has a perfectly clear picture of the battle space or what their enemies are doing. Your units cannot see everywhere at once, nor can they see behind objects that you would expect to block their line of sight. In Company of Heroes 2, all objects on the battlefield taller than a soldier affect line of sight. Notice how your forces cannot see behind this building. This true sight system can be used tactically against the enemy to set up ambushes. Line of sight is dynamic. Burning vehicles and smoke can obscure your forces' ability to see, whereas destroying large buildings or blowing holes in walls will allow your units to see into previously blocked areas. When you require additional military forces, select from the appropriate base structure and select the forces you wish to deploy. When they arrive on the battlefield, units will move to the building they were deployed from unless a rally point is set. Rally points can be set for units by selecting the rally point option from the building or by selecting the building and right-clicking on the map. Each building can have a unique rally location. Units will arrive as close and as quickly as they can to the set rally point. You can cancel a unit deployment by left-clicking on the portrait.